Hello, my most awesome project managers. Welcome back to Pembok Gold. Last episode, we looked at page 27, and we replaced a number of those items with alternative, more precise process names. So I'm going to take you down memory lane and ask you, do you remember what goes in box one? Do you remember what goes in box two? And do you remember what goes in box three? And do you remember what goes in box four, five, six, and seven? Do you remember what comes out of box three and goes into box one? Do you remember what comes out of box one and goes into box two? And do you remember what comes out of box two and goes into all of these other boxes below? So first of all, box three is actually direct and manage project work. From here, you get WPD. All of that goes into a number of processes. So for this one, you want to remember that this is all monitoring and controlling processes. Outside of integration. In the subsequent episodes, I will assume that you understand this and I will not spend as much time going through it. From these processes, we get WPI, work performance information, and that goes into monitor and control project work. And from there, we get work performance reports. And work performance reports goes into all of these. Now, what are these? Four processes, two M's, manage team, monitor risk, PICC, as in perform integrated change control, and one more M, manage communications. Okay? You can draw this out as you will, you can renumber it, but I want you to get to the point where if I ask you to label this, it is business as usual. Three boxes leading down into those four, okay? Take this seriously because I really believe it can help your PMP prep. Now, going back to page 27, where the story continues from where we left it, you see there is an arrow. And this arrow causes a lot of concern because people wonder what on earth are they talking about? We have a random box again. And this box is blandly listed as various processes. Various processes. What do we mean by various processes? It's a catch-all for many things. However, I wouldn't link the various processes to this image. Now, what this is trying to tell you is that various processes give you change requests. Various processes give you change requests. Those change requests go to the process that you know as perform integrated change control. Okay? which is the same one over here. But for convenience, I will document it here. Perform integrated change control. Okay. 
perform integrated change control when processed will give you outputs. And one of the major outputs performing a gridded change control gives you is what is shown rather ambiguously in the image right at the bottom. I'm, I'm talking about figure 1-7, page 27. Okay? So this is what we're looking at. Pembok, page 27, figure 1-7. Right at the bottom, it shows you approved change requests. And that's all well and good. But these approved change requests come specifically out of perform integrated change control. Okay, so it says project change control in the PMBOK guide, but I want to point out that it is specifically perform integrated change control. Now, there's some further confusion that students have pointed out in this image that I want to address, and it is where these approved change requests are shown to go it shows that approved change requests go into various processes. Let's be a little bit specific here. I wanna show you the specific processes that this goes to. So approved change requests go into these processes and I'll just refer to them as easily as I can. So they go to direct and manage project work. It also goes to the process known as control quality. And we also have this going back into a procurement process because changes could be effected in control procurement. So in essence, these approved change requests actually go here. All right? But that is not my concern. When you take a look at the PMBOK guide, it shows approved change requests going to various processes, and out of those come the project management plan and project documents updates, and it shows those going into executing processes. That is not entirely, entirely, entirely precise. So I wanna redirect how we think about that, because I have gotten quite a number of questions regarding this, okay. So I want you to think about approved change requests. Yes, they go into these guys as well, but I want you to think specifically about this one, DMPW. Approved change requests go in here to be worked upon in an integrative sense, okay? When you get these change requests that have been approved going into direct and manage project work, the way I see this is a little bit of interaction will happen first between direct and manage project work and a number of other places. When you get a request to rework something, redo something, redo the budget, redo the schedule, redo whatever it is, there is an integrative factor involved. You are doing work. You're not necessarily planning just yet. You are doing work. Because if someone asks for a requote or someone asks for a reschedule or someone asks you to rescope, there's a possibility that that scope may not be accepted. That new estimate may not be accepted. So you have to look at it as work, okay? 
Now, if eventually that work does become part of the approved work to be done, only at that point is the transformation from what you have here to what is in the PMBOK guide as, I'm just gonna put this in red, project management plan updates. For these updates to, in essence, become part of the project management plan, they need to get into the project management plan. And that happens in the develop project management plan process. Remember, these approved change requests are corrective action, preventive action, defect repair, and updates. Also known as Capadru. You gotta remember Capadru is really what these approved change requests are based on. So if you get an approved change request, it needs to be worked, okay? Think about it as being worked into planning from the direct and manage project work process. From there, you will get these project management plan updates and they come from a number of processes, but because integration is what it is, I want you to think about them being integrated in a central place as they have attempted to show you on page 27. But ultimately, you need to think about these being funneled into DMPW as these approved change requests are funneled in here for rework, they eventually make their way into the developed project management plan process, but they do not come under the name you are expecting. These updates come in the form of outputs from other processes. And that is why you see outputs from other processes as a mentioned input to the developed project management plan process. One might argue project management plan updates come from everywhere. Indeed they do. And that's why I'm asking you to think about DMPW as a catch-all because it is the best process that brings together all of these moving parts of change requests, approved change requests, and project management plan updates. And besides, if you take a look at page 27, you see that reference is being made to it right there at the top as executing processes, because we've already determined that that is DMPW right there at the top, okay? So for those of you trying to make sense out of the PMBOK guide and how these outputs from other processes flow into the project management plan, you've got to think about it like this from an integrative perspective, okay? Now, when you have understood that, you can now see how everything revolves around integration. This is integration, this is integration, this is integration. Think about it. This is integration. Four out of the seven processes are right here in this image. And that's why I tell people, don't take integration for granted. It is, in my estimation, 25% of your PMP exam. Pay close attention to it and you'll be glad that you did. And that is pretty much it for page 27. There's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of stuff to unravel, but I'm hoping that this discussion has helped you to some degree to unravel what exactly is happening in the PMBOK guide. Thank you for joining me. Remember, if you are looking for stellar training and coaching, you need to go to pmsucceed.com 
and look for the one-on-one -on -one coaching option, whether you are a PMP or not. Mentoring and coaching is available, and also go to praiseon.com to examine the training options. There's a plethora of training options on praiseon.com. Check out both of these sites, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.